Some Mercedes models are the epitome of on-road luxury. Others are almost unrivaled for off-road prowess. And then there's one which claims to offer the best of both, the GLS. This is one of the very few super luxury SUVs that can seat seven fully sized adults. And it claims to be able to do so while offering a properly dynamic drive on road as well as extreme capability off it. This is the third generation design in this model line and it claims to be smarter, plusher, more refined and even more appealing than before. Not everyone is gonna feel comfortable piloting something of this size. But provided you do, then GLS motoring is a pretty fabulous way to view your everyday world. The great all-round visibility that you get from your lofty perch behind the wheel makes maneuverability a lot more straightforward than you might expect. And in any case, other road users tend to scatter as you bear down upon them. Now, there are, in theory, uh, two models on offer, but given that one of them, the Mercedes-AMG 63 Formatic Plus, has a 34-litre petrol V8 installed up front, in practice, almost all sales will be of the GLS 400D diesel variant that we're trying here. If you happen to be familiar with the previous generation X166 series GLS, then you'll be expecting a few mechanical changes given the way that model was merely a lightly evolved version of a design originally launched way back in 2012. Sure enough, there's a stiffer, more sophisticated, all new MHA, that's modular high architecture platform. And the diesel engine on offer here is also different, uh, now a straight six and now putting out 330 horsepower, 72 horsepower more than the previous shape GLS 350D could manage. The way that it transmits torque to tarmac is different too, and much more sophisticated. The old model had a fixed 50-50 torque split front to rear. This time round, power delivery is variable between the axles, generally defaulting to rear wheel drive on tarmac, but able on demand to shift up to 50% of torque frontwards via a clever center differential. Ride quality from the Airmatic air suspension is good, but not quite as supple as a rival BMW X7. But this GLS is much more capable off-road than that Munich model, particularly if you pay more for the off-road package, which includes a proper low-range version of the standard 9-speed 9G Tronic Auto gearbox. Efficiency figures, uh, well, they're not especially competitive. Uh, this GLS 400D manages up to 30.7 miles to the gallon on the WLTP combined cycle and up to 231 grams per kilometre of WLTP rated CO2. But with a 90 litre fuel tank filled, you'd probably be looking at a driving range of around 600 miles. So it's big. Of course it is, even more so than the car it replaces, which already was large enough to make your neighbours question their right to light restrictions. This third generation X167 series design is longer, wider and higher than its predecessor. But the key change is an extra 60 millimetres of wheelbase, which means there's now well over 3.1 metres between the wheels. A more purposeful look comes courtesy of a twin power dome bonnet that flows down into a nearly upright radiator grille that'll be quite different depending on whether you've decided on this normal GLS 400D variant or the alternative Mercedes-AMG GLS 63 performance model. From the side, you really do get an idea of the scale of this piece of Stuttgart real estate. A steeply raked windscreen, generously sculpted arched surfaces and a large glass house combined with this strong shoulder line and this distinct lower mid-level crease that gives the flank some shape. And predictably, the wheels are huge. You can have rims on this car bigger than are available on any other Mercedes, up to 23 inches in size, which fill arches framed by flush fitted liners. It's imposing from the back too, a powerful shoulder muscle extending from the rear doors to the two-piece LED tail lights with three-dimensional signatures, lamps linked by this central chrome strip. So what kind of interior should a car like this have? Opulent, obviously, but S-Class-like? Is the luxury cabin of a boardroom level limousine really appropriate to the lifestyle of a properly capable family SUV?
Mercedes obviously doesn't think so because behind the wheel here it doesn't really feel S-Class like at all, which as just suggested might of course be completely appropriate given this car's rather different remit. You sit higher up of course and pretty much everything's borrowed from the brand's smaller GLE model, including these squarical central vents and these arched grab handles either side of the main touchpad. As you'd expect, there's an exemplary standard of fit, finish and materials quality with a very high-end blend of leather, open pore wood and aluminium accents. And as usual with the brand these days, you get this distinctive widescreen MBUX cockpit layout with its twin 12.3 inch virtual displays, which can be activated by the provided Hey Mercedes voice activated functionality. Time to take a look in the rear. This X167 series GLS is 77 millimeters longer than its predecessor and the 60 millimeter wheelbase increase we mentioned earlier means this car now has a wheelbase length 100 millimeters longer than that of a long wheelbase S-Class, which sounds promising for backseat folk. This is the part of the car where you most readily appreciate this a large body shell's extra space. To be honest, the legroom can't match that of an S-Class, but there's 37 millimeters more of it this time round, and also seven millimeters more headroom than there was in the previous GLS. Enough, in fact, so that six footers can easily be accommodated, even with this huge standard panoramic glass roof fitted, one of the biggest ever fitted to any production car. Plus, you not only get a backrest that can be adjusted for rake, but a seat base that can slide over a range of 100 millimeters for extra knee space. Finally, let's take a look at the third row. Once you're in these rearmost pews, it'll be abundantly clear that a 5,213 millimeter vehicle length, that's 283 millimeters longer than a GLE, still isn't quite sufficient for proper adult standards of legroom at the very back of a seven seat SUV. In a GLS, if you're above school age, you'll need to persuade those ahead of you to move their center bench base forward a little and slightly compromise their legroom. But a compromise is obviously a lot easier to reach than it would be with a seven seater from the GLE Q7 XC90 class of SUV. And unlike with most cars of that type, including the GLE, Isofix child seat fastenings are fitted back here, as well as in the middle row. Finally, let's check out the boot, accessed via this easy pack powered tailgate. There's actually more space than you'd expect with this third seating row upright, 355 litres to parcel shelf level, and when you power fold these chairs into the floor via these right hand cargo sidewall buttons, 890 litres of cargo capacity is freed up. If you need more, the 40-20-40 split of the second row backrest means that longer items like skis can easily be accommodated. And if you use the electrical functionality to fold the second row, then as much as 2,400 litres of space can be freed up. If you're in the unusual position of wanting a huge seven seat super luxury SUV that can climb the lower slopes of Snowdon, then stop by Sainsbury's on the way to an evening at the Ritz, then you won't be disappointed with this one. True, this GLS isn't quite the all round proposition a Range Rover can be, but in many respects, it offers far more car for much less money, which means that in your SUV search for the biggest and the best, you shouldn't overlook it.